nature knowledge. Greetings, this is Mara with the trustees and the Cooperative Nature School here at the Trustees Moose Hill Farm in Sharon. And I would like to welcome you to the second episode of Nature Knowledge. So today I'm at an area of the farm that has a lovely brook running through it. And my nature school friends love to come here and fish for leaves at the bottom of the brook and explore the area, which is very wet in parts. And that makes this a very special place. So exploring here today, I'm struck by what is blooming and growing here. Look at these beautiful big green leaves, my friends. Do you remember what plant this is? It's called skunk cabbage. And it's one of the first plants to bloom in spring. In fact, it bloomed so early, I saw the bulbs poking out of the ground way back in February. So how can this plant survive such cold temperatures? Well, this plant has an awesome adaptation. Sit down, my friends, because this one is going to blow your mind. This plant can produce its own heat. Yes, this plant uses thermogenesis, a process for producing heat, a characteristic that we warm-blooded mammals all share, but it's extremely rare in plants. Like most perennial plants, the skunk cabbage will take its sugars and store it in its roots over winter so that it has enough energy in the spring to sprout forward. But unlike most plants, the skunk cabbage will use that stored energy to produce heat, and it produces a lot of heat. The skunk cabbage can maintain temperatures of around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It can even go as high as 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So it has no problem melting that snow in early spring so it can grow. Now in early spring, the temperatures can be still quite cool and there are uh, bees and other critters that take advantage of the heat producing skunk cabbage. So sometimes if you take a look, you might find one of those critters inside the flower of the skunk cabbage, enjoying a bit of a sauna treatment. The heat certainly helps the skunk cabbage survive cold temperatures, but it also serves another purpose. The heat from the skunk cabbage enables its scent to be more volatile so that it distributes farther afield so that the pollinators can identify the plant and find it with ease. Friends, do you remember what the skunk cabbage smells like? Its name offers a hint. The skunk cabbage smells like skunk. Why? Well, if your pollinator was a fly or an insect that ate dead and rotting animals and you wanted to attract that pollinator, well, you better be pretty stinky. The pollinators of this plant are flies and carrion beetles. And carrion is another word for dead and rotting animals. The smell of the skunk cabbage contrasts greatly with another plant that is blooming by the brook now, the northern spicebush. Like the skunk cabbage, the spicebush likes to grow where it's wet. Uh, it also is a very early bloomer and like the skunk cabbage, its name suggests what it smells like. Can you guess? That's right. The flowers, the bark, the berries, the leaves, they all have this lovely aromatic spicy scent. So our local bees are the most common pollinators for this plant. The bright yellow flowers and aromatic scent attract the bees and other pollinators that enable this plant to produce these gorgeous red berries uh, that our local birds love to eat. I mentioned the bees, but there are other pollinators that enjoy the nectar from the spice bush. 
our morning cloak butterfly, one of the first butterflies we see after winter in those gorgeous spring azures. They love the nectar of this plant as well. And there is one butterfly who is so connected to the spice bush that it has the word in its name, the spice bush swallowtail. Spice bush swallowtail butterflies lay their eggs underneath the leaves of the spice bush. And the caterpillars love those leaves. And I know some of my nature school friends have seen those caterpillars and they, like the skunk cabbage, have awesome adaptations. To keep away the birds, the main predators of the spice bush swallowtail caterpillar, they have a few tricks. The caterpillars, when they first hatch, first look like bird droppings, which the birds are not interested in. And then their markings start to make them look like scary snakes, which the birds are afraid of. They even have another trick, as if that wasn't enough. The caterpillars, when they're eating and they've decided they're done with the leaf, they will chew the stem so that the leaf falls to the ground, destroying all evidence that they had been there. So the birds don't know they're on the shrub. I think that's pretty smart of the spice bush swallowtail. And I'm looking forward, friends, to coming back here when this spice bush leaves out and checking to see if we can find some eggs under the leaves. There's one more plant I want to point out to you. This one right here. This, do you recognize it? Is cinnamon fern. And like the skunk cabbage and the spice bush, it likes to grow where it's wet and it's also growing in early spring along the brook. Um, but unlike those other plants which produce seeds, this plant produces spores and that's how it reproduces. Of course, that's a topic for another episode. But right now, the cinnamon fern is in its fiddlehead stage. And maybe um, you can recognize the curl, um, makes it look somewhat like the, the head of a fiddle that you can play, the musical instrument. Now, in the markets around this time, you may see fiddleheads on sale. So there are certain ferns when they're in the fiddlehead stage that you can eat, but this is not one of them. And this little woolly coating that you see on top of the, around the fronds is a good clear indication that this is not edible. So friends, all these plants, the skunk cabbage, the spice bush, the cinnamon fern. They all grow here on the farm in early spring. And they're just one of the many, many things that make Moose Hill Farm a special place. And I encourage you to come and see for yourself. Okay, that's uh, it for nature knowledge. And uh, now that you have the knowledge, I encourage you to go and explore and let me know what you discover.